Thank you very much. Uh, I think we will reserve further questions for the end session so that we don't cut into the time of the other speakers. It gives me great pleasure to invite uh, Professor Srikant Kandu Kondapalli to come and give us his address. Again, uh, we have another China expert. Uh, we all know uh, his work on the PLA and uh, what he has done. Uh, so before, without any further ado and without cutting into the time of the speakers, let me ask <coughs> Professor Kondapalli to give his uh, uh, talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chandra. Uh, good morning to you all. The presentation is on the uh, People's Liberation Army and the uh, impact on the Asia-Pacific region in the future. Of course, the Asia-Pacific region is quite large. Uh, 54 countries form part of the APEC, 43 countries in Asia. Uh, so we have uh, nearly half of the globe. Uh, in. Uh, so let, let me condense this to a few things. Um, and uh, telegraphically convey to you what the PLA modernization had been. But one of the main uh, uh, features of uh, the PLA, uh, or at least the strategic thinking in China, is uh, uh, the goalposts have been changing uh, quite frequently, and we do not know the strategic direction that China is taking, which has implications for the PLA as well. Uh, last three decades, China had played up with several concepts in the strategic field. So that brings in a lot of uncertainty in what the uh, PLA ha will have uh, an impact on the Asia-Pacific. Uh, starting with the um, uh, what has been said as uh, um, keep a low profile, um, some Americans translate this as hiding your capabilities, biding for time. Tang Xiaoping said this in 1989, uh, but of course China is displaying uh, what, it ha what it has been doing in the, say, Beijing Olympics, Shanghai Expo, aircraft carrier program, um, uh, and a host of other things, the, the uh, Gulf of Aden operations. Um, China actually is displaying power abroad than what Tang Xiaoping had said, hide your capabilities. So, keep a low profile. China today doesn't keep a low profile. Uh, last June in California, the uh, Xi Jinping, the president, suggested a new type of major country relations. Uh, and he identified US, he identified European Union later, uh, Russians, uh, and no one else. Uh, India comes up as actually as an emerging power in the Chinese thinking process. So in the hierarchy of powers they have, traditional powers, uh, those who have already been uh, risen, like the US, uh, so on and so forth, uh, Russia. Uh, India comes somewhere at the bottom of their hierarchy in terms of power structures. So I think India is down the, uh, probably at the BRICS level uh, or the RICS level, Russia, India, China. That's where India is relevant for China uh, and wants to kind of uh, have a tie-up with India only at that level rather than at other levels. Um, of course, on multilateralism, we have had some interaction. Uh, so what this slide basically suggests is there is a lot of confusion uh, on uh, the strategic direction that China is going to take. Uh, unlike the 1945 liberal order which in which we all live in today uh, with uh, United Nations, United Nations Security Council, uh, there is a, a certain pattern for interaction between uh, different countries. Uh, the IMF, World Bank, Bretton Woods institutions, the alliances, military alliances, the uh, the norms that govern international relations. Uh, China so far did not say what exactly it wants or how exactly it will implement uh, policies at the global level. Uh, we have seen some statements, but not really necessarily assurances to the international community on where the direction will be, uh, China's direction will be. So this is a huge black box so far, and uh, we have no clarification. The goalposts have been changing every decade. They have come up with new slogans. Uh, current fad is China dream. Uh, how does China dream fit with the Asia Pacific dream? Uh, dream actually is a personal thing. Uh, everyone dreams, a psychoanalytic, uh, a Freudian uh, kind of uh, interpretation one can give. Um, so there is a problem with China dream as well. But in between you have so many uh, other concepts which have come in and 
they have risen they have fallen uh, some have also uh, um, they uh, dusted it off and uh, built it up one is the uh, strong nation uh, rich country strong army uh, which was a 19th century idea by lian chi chao and kang yue wei in uh, 1898 uh, that has been dusted off by wen jiapao and is in currency now strong army rich country uh, which the 132 billion dollars of defense budget last week would have really uh, give comfort to the pla so the main problem is the strategic direction that china is taking but unlike what tang shaoping said of low profile what we have seen is china actually had exhibited capabilities in the last decade or so uh, one is uh, in the chonan yongpyeong firing incident in uh, north korea south korea relations there has been uh, a um, kind of uh, position that china had taken uh, while it had sided with the us in the united nations security council on north korean nuclear program and others uh, in the four resolutions that they helped pass through in the unsc um, what we have also seen is that they have um, suggested to the us that yellow sea or east china sea will be the chinese sea um for instance when the us south korea wanted to conduct ma- maritime exercises which is an annual exercise for the last uh, 39 years uh, south korea and us have been conducting the uh, Ch- the chinese were able to put up uh, their own version of uh, uh, a blockade in the yellow sea um so this is one which we have seen starkly when ma xiaotian currently the air force chief then he was deputy chief of general staff who had imposed this restriction on anybody coming into the yellow sea uh the second major event we have come across is the uh, senkaku tiaitai islands uh september 2010 and then 2012 we have seen a matching kind of uh, slanging match uh, between uh, the japanese and the chinese uh, escalation is uh, pretty high uh, japan is as you all known uh, the us military ally but us has been very uh, reluctant to openly say what that uh, alliance partnership would be vis-a-vis the senkaku islands uh, some suggested that the first one who fires across will be the one which decides whether the us will come to the rescue of uh, its allies basically it means if the chinese fire first uh, there has been uh, a close rapport between the two and uh if the chinese fire first possibly the uh, the pentagon would come to the japanese rescue but if the japanese fire if the if uh, some accident accidental things happen in the in the in this enkaku vicinity then it will be a kind of strategic ambiguity by the uh, by the us administrations uh we have also seen during panetta's visit the former defense secretary to beijing as well as tokyo that he had asked Uh, both sides to be neutral meaning that uh, us telling its own allies to be neutral towards the other side uh, unwilling to take military action in this sphere um co- senkaku islands have been identified as core interests this is in the line of tibet taiwan south china sea and now in addition to this uh, the senkaku islands as as part of the core interests uh, which daipingco uh elaborated in 2009 and now has been extended so we do not know which will be the core interest will uh, other oceans become part of core interest of china is not clear but what is clearly indicative is china is expanding its goal posts on this um third south china sea has been identified as a core interest um, china has genuine concerns there uh, Uh, out of 22 20 27 22 of the sea lanes china is dependent on so there are genuine concerns for china uh, china has nearly 40% of its uh, uh, trade passing through 40 to 50% of trade passing through uh, imagine uh, 10 trillion dollars of gdp of china and roughly 40% of that passing through the south china sea so heavily dependent on south china sea indeed it is a core interest but this core interest came up only in the recent period uh, in 2009 but what is clear is yang chechu the former foreign minister and the current state councilor uh, suggested that uh, to a asean audience uh, suggested that uh, we are a big power and you are a small power and that is a fact uh, meaning 
it's kind of big power uh, mentality as uh, is reflective of that opinion. Singaporeans uh, now start the balancing of power uh, and bring in uh, various other countries. Uh, in the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the uh, PLA sends for the first time the army aviation. Uh, helicopters were sent in this region. This is the first deployment abroad. Uh, remember the old uh, Chinese saying from Mao Zedong, uh, Hua Kofang, uh, Tang Xiaoping times that we follow an independent foreign policy, we deploy no troops abroad, we have no military bases abroad, uh, and so on. Now that is changing. China sends six to 7,000 troops for peace mission exercises with SEO, especially in Kazakhstan and in Russia. So the troops are deployed abroad, although it comes in the counterterrorism or three evils countering uh, missions. Uh, then you have the uh, recently, last three, four years, uh, um, the Chinese have evacuated uh, the, the citizens from uh, from Egypt and Libya. Libya, about 42,000 were airlifted by IL-76, IL-78s, and uh, naval ships, which is a, uh, those in the military uh, would understand that this is a medium lift capability that they have been able to achieve about 8,000 kilometers away from its uh, home ports, which basically means that this is a dual use uh, capability that they have achieved uh, and uh, can be uh, used in any, any other theater in future. So that's the capability that China has been able to, in comparison to the previous period. So we, we, are, we are looking at the recent uh, exhibiting of capabilities. Uh, they have also done the air-to-air -air refueling exercises with Pakistan and a NATO partner, Turkey, uh, before. Turkey, incidentally, Erdogan previously said the 2009 uh, Urumqi incident was a genocide. Now he completely shifts gear conducts an air-to-air -air refueling uh, exercise. Um, China had sent 16 contingent contingencies to the contingents to the Gulf of Aden operations. Um, one of these, the 12th contingent, had uh, amphibious ships, uh, which is raising a lot of eyebrows because you don't you don't include a uh, amphibious ship for uh, pirates. Um, the Dutch are more innovative. They have they have they have deployed a submarine to counter the pirates. Uh, and somebody in this room or outside should say to the audience whether you use submarines or amphibious ships for counter piracy operations. Uh, US, China also has become very uh, comfortable in trailing. Previously, the Americans used to trail the Chinese ships. Now the Chinese are trailing. March 2009, the USS impeccable incident in South China Sea, but last December 2013, USS Cowpens was also uh, trailed by the Chinese ships. Then ADIZ was established in the East China Sea, which is not a new idea because the Taiwanese have established, the Japanese have established before, Koreans followed uh, uh, after the Chinese ADIZ, but it basically indicates to China contesting power in the Pacific. Uh, I, I think we are going to see a lot of this contesting um, in the near future and China chipping in with, uh, so China is showcasing itself as a major power and uh, trying to draw allies and friends. So that's the game, traditional game that the Americans have followed, the Chinese are following now. Uh, more important for us, the Debsang Plains incident so far, um, uh, like uh, NSA Shiv Shankar Menon or uh, EAM uh, Salman Khurshid, uh, they have not been able to be given an answer why this has happened. Uh, of course, diplomatically they said we didn't raise it, but that in itself is raising a, a question. Uh, so far, the Chinese did not explain why, if the Indian Defense Secretary is correct, uh, the, uh, that he spoke to the Indian parliamentary delegation on defense that Chinese troops have marched in 19 kilometers inside the in Indian territories. Uh, then why the Chinese have moved in is there is no explanation from the Chinese side. This is despite the fact that we have a strategic partnership agreement with uh, China. Uh, strategic partners don't behave like this. Uh, so we have a uh, discordant note on the Depths and Bulge Plains incident. Uh, then we have the uh, new, in, new suggestion during Yan Shichir's visit for the 17th Special Rep meeting uh, last month. Uh, there was the proposal for the 
maritime silk route uh, in this is in addition to the land uh, silk routes that they have been able to establish with uh, Kazakhstan and beyond to Europe uh, the maritime silk route is uh, kind of a suggestion uh, that uh, has come up only now uh, this is in addition to the maritime dialogue process, maritime cooperation dialogue process that the Joint Secretary East Asia conducts with uh, the Chinese side. Uh, so this is again uh, a reformulation of the two ocean strategy. Uh, in 2009, Admiral Keating mentioned that his counterpart in China had suggested to dividing the Indian Ocean and West Pacific uh, and the Pacific as a whole between the Chinese and the uh, and the Americans. So the Maritime Silk Route appears to be a kind of rehash of that old two ocean strategy that ap uh, appeared before. So what we have seen is the direction is confusing, uh, but capabilities are substantially rising. So that's uh, the starting point for the discussion today. 18th Party Congress in 2012 had uh, specifically mentioned about the um, the uh, IT applications in the armed forces uh, of China. This is the direction that China is taking now. Mechanization to informationization is the major development. But what is important is the PLA now, 18th Party Congress says that the PLA will uh, support China's international standing, commensurate with the international standing of China, the armed forces will act. So that's a very clear this is like the American QDR and NSS, very clearly saying uh, PLA will, will uh, this is 18 party Congress document, so uh, a Bible for the, uh, for the next 10, 10 years uh, till the 20th party Congress roughly. So we have seen the, uh, at the strategic levels they have indicated to the direction. The 12th five year plan on the PLA modernization is also very clear in the next five years uh, or till about 2015, 2016, the 12th five-year plan um, will focus on training. On uh, the second one, uh, military struggle preparations basically is, is uh, the contest with the Americans. Military struggle preparations has been used extensively in the PLA literature to say what the Communist Party's perspectives are. And so that's... Uh, um, informationization, a new type of military personnel. These are based basically on the Gulf War kind of an Afghan war kind of uh, uh, caliber. Um, then armaments and education, training with foreign militaries, so including the hand in hand with the Indian side. Uh, so training with the foreign militaries to understand the direction in the revolution in military affairs. Uh, China is now, in terms of the modernization, is transforming into or attempting to transform into uh, joint, uh, integrated joint uh, combat operations. Uh, this is one buzzword in the uh, PLA forces. Uh, what they are trying to do is what is called purpleization. Uh, no distinctions between the Army, Navy, Air Force and 2nd Artillery, the rocket forces. Uh, they are now trying to kind of... Uh, 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 blur the service boundaries uh, with IT applications. Uh, these are based on network-centric uh, coordination in war from plan to action. There has been shift in the, at least in the Chinese military literature on this. These are again straight from the two, 1991 Gulf War and 2003 Gulf War uh, preparations. So straight away from the American uh, handbooks. Potential campaign scenarios, uh, Taiwan reduced with ECFA and peace agreement, uh, mind you, was able to do with the Chinese and recent talks with the Chinese side. Uh, Four million Chinese have traveled to Taiwan uh, and it generates nearly 1% of the GDP for the Taiwanese. Um, uh, so cross-strait uh, economic cooperation framework agreement is um, uh, actually so what Chinese are doing is uh, without fighting, uh, subjugating the enemy. So that's uh, one way through economic means. Uh, second scenario is the South China Sea. Uh, the Chinese foreign ministry said that they will not impose an ADIZ in this region, but it is uh, quite possible that they will do in these areas in future. Uh, ADIZ was uh, put up in the uh, East China Sea. Uh, that is another major campaign area. Uh, which has been hotting up for the last three years. Uh, yes, um, 
This is one campaign scenario I picked up from the Chinese uh, internet uh, on how they would like to do with Pakistan and others. Uh, I will leave a copy here for anyone who wants to see. Uh, steps in modernization, military modernization, the 2006 white paper, they have released eight white papers and out of this, the most concrete one was the 2006 white paper and they laid down the uh, quite bland statements. We do not know exactly what it means, but uh, uh, these are the official documents on this. Direction of modernization is selective uh, uh, to select pockets of excellence, uh, but also in the stand of weapon systems. C4 has a modernization space and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, unlike in the Indian Armed Forces, which never demobilized, and we have now a recent rumor of uh, a coup attempt in Delhi. Uh, unlike this, we saw the Chinese have demobilized 10 times. Demilitarization and the next demobilization is possibly a 40% reduction in the PLA. Uh, no, none of this happens in India for some reason. Uh, but they are reducing nearly 40% of 1.6 million troops now in the next few years' time. Um, quickly, the modernization of the uh, uh, has happened in terms of the Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, in terms of the equipment from 1985, where when the uh, mo military modernization started uh, with Tang Xiaoping, uh, 1985 to 2013, the uh, number of artillery pieces have been reduced, but their quality is being enhanced. MBTs, main battle tanks, also are being modernized with uh, uh, night vision uh, as well as laser-guided uh, munitions. Then you have the uh, infantry fighting vehicles and the multiple rocket launchers. We have seen the quality, quantity has been reduced, but quality has been expanded substantially in the uh, land forces. In the Navy portion, again, 1985 to 2013, uh, the number of submarines uh, uh, have gone down from uh, nearly 104 to current uh, 64. Uh, to, the, uh, to the recent versions in the submarines, um, especially the, uh, the SSNs and the SSBNs, the strategic nuclear submarines, there's also been uh, some modernization, especially in the stealth features of the frigates and the destroyers. Uh, number of combatants in the uh, in the patrol and coastal category has also been reduced substantially, qual qual quantity wise. Uh, quality wise, there has been in the air force there has been substantial progress as well on the BVRs, uh, beyond visual range uh, versions, uh, fourth plus generation fighters, uh, transports plus trainers. We have seen substantial jump in trainers. Uh, uh, in the Chinese Air Force. Uh, what is also important, while the Chinese have imported uh, 250 AL-31F turbofan engines from Russia, now today they are manufacturing their own uh, turbofan engines. And uh, if Andrew Erickson's uh, thesis is correct, then they're going to generate 4,000 new uh, turbofan engines, which means all of these will be uh, mushrooming in our neighborhood, Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, possibly Sri Lanka, uh, acquiring those turbofan engines, which substantially means uh, a heavy influence on the Indian Air Force requirements. Uh, in the second artillery, there's been a lot of emphasis on uh, SRBMs and MRBMs rather than on ICBM category. But DH-10 uh, land attack cruise missiles are also being specifically uh, upgraded. Um, basically, these are meant to uh, assist the second artillery for uh, uh, conventional strikes, but using the strategic platforms. So that provides a lot of ambiguity in the uh, in the targeting doctrines of second artillery, meaning thereby that uh, we have a lot of escalation in the uh, in the. Let me skip these. Uh, uh, the new platforms in the last two years are, are mentioned in this um, J20. Uh, Aircraft carrier refurbishment, uh, UN class submarine, Chin class uh, SSBNs. Uh, a second stealth fighter, J31, for the aircraft carrier has been unveiled last March. Then you have a stealth drone, drones becoming the fashion these days. That's uh, also China is testing. Uh, this January, they tested a high, ultra high speed strike vehicle. Um, and uh, some electro-optical satellite systems are also displayed. Uh, I will skip these again. Uh, uh, military exercises where you actually find the mi military capabilities being actually displayed uh, have been actually substantial. Uh, in the last one year in Tibet alone, they conducted nearly 27 exercises. 
uh, some details are mentioned here. Uh, uh, rapid response, uh, joint combat, uh, information warfare, those are the training tasks in the PLA. Budgets uh, across the Asian region, the China has no become number one. In fact, possibly uh, all put together, China is now with 132, assuming that figure is correct, um, has been. And this is the last slide. Um, so the military modernization has been substantial, and uh, there has been uh, major progress made uh, by China, especially in the hardware. Uh, but in terms of software training, etc., there is still problematic. There is the um, following the script is the main uh, problem in the uh, in the uh, armed forces. Uh, subjugating without fighting, we come across this debate in the Chinese military uh, discourse, uh, which is following from Sun Tzu in 16th, 6th century. BC. Uh, central dilemma of, uh, of advanced technology and low levels of training being addressed these days. Uh, there is uh, integration of different weapon systems for joint operations. Uh, the poor battlefield experience after the 1979 Vietnam War, China did not wage a war, but that is being overcome with simulation and other uh, methods recently. Uh, security perimeters are being expanded, um, and this poses a key problem for the neighboring countries. Thank you. Thank you, Sultan, for a very, very uh, illuminating and uh, updated presentation on the PLA and uh, China, China's strategy.